Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. I am delighted on this episode to be talking with comics creator Matt Hansel. Matt, I, I want to mention a couple of titles here you've created in this really interesting world that seems broad to me of the Three Stooges, uh, Underdog, sort of these um, cartoon and animation adjacent things. Rocky and Bullwinkle, I think, is on your uh, CV at this point. And then also in my way of researching and finding books, I think you've worked on a few things outside of that style mm -hmm. as well. Um, yep. One of those being Hell Cop, is that right? Yeah. And yeah. Last Barbarian as well. Yep. Yep. I, I love the range. I love the range that you yeah. bring to the medium and that you play with. Um, and so I also know you primarily as uh, inker colorist. Are those kind of the, the primary roles that you like to play? Uh, primarily on, uh, especially on, uh, on the cartoon books. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate enough to pencil uh, two issues of underdog, the 1975 special, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and also the first issue of underdog and pals, um, when they relaunched the book, uh, but other, all the rest of my work was inking and coloring. Um, nice, nice. so yeah. And then like on books on hell cop, last barbarian, uh, the work that I do at uh, uh, Anomaly Productions, Brian Haberline Studio, mm -hmm. um, that I'm on the production end. So I'm working with Poser and all the computer programs and things like that. It's uh, it's less paper and pencil and more uh, technical, digital kind of stuff. Cool. So it, cool. it runs a gamut. And then um, I have my own independent titles, uh, uh, Marty and Spud, uh, that is published through Guerrilla Comics, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a Calvin and Hobbes meets uh, adventure strips, meets humor strips, meets all kinds of things. Um, uh, and uh, I'll have a new series coming out next year uh, with them. But and then also with American mythology, uh, I did cartoon puppet horror theater earlier okay. this year, which was an independent book uh, about a group of puppets caught in a horror universe, uh, <laughs> which was fun to do. Uh, and then I'm uh, just finishing up uh, this week. I'll finish up work on a new story called Ornamental, uh, uh, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks. If you're watching this before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Christmas 2023 um, it'll be out I think in late November or early December something like that um, oh yeah this will definitely be in time for so, that yeah yeah. so uh, uh, that story is called Ornamental and it's about some Christmas ornaments that come to life and some hilarity that happens uh, happens with that so uh, 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 you're right I, I've, I've got a broad range that I've worked on and sometimes until i speak it aloud i i uh, i don't even really remember that i do all that stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, i love that title ornamental and that's a it's an yeah. interesting and fun concept so i'm curious to see that and it sounds like when you're penciling you're using pencils to pencil so yes yeah yeah i uh, um when i'm uh when i'm doing basically everything that i do except for the work i do for brian um, I do on uh, paper and pencil, uh, you know, right here's the first page of ornamental oh, that awesome. I'm working on right now. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I even do the lettering on the board, uh, cause I'm that old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, that though. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. That, that also explains why underdog was the first work that I was kind of like, yes, uh, yes. of yours that I, that I tapped into with that creative process. Um, so curious, you're talking about sort of going back to, uh, materials and using very traditional materials. Um, mm -hmm. what was it about comics that kind of drew you in and, uh, what drew you to the medium initially? Um, I used to, uh, I, I love to read. And uh, even as a kid, uh, I, I was drawn to cartoons, uh, you know, underdog. And the when I was a kid uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, um, the Ralph Bashke, you know, 1967, it is a uh, Spider-Man cartoon is still being rerun and Adam West Batman still being rerun and underdog and Rocky and uh, Bullwinkle and all the rest. Um, and I was always drawn to those. And that drew me every week to the Sunday uh, paper, mm -hmm. uh, to the Sunday comics. And 
I used to uh, see how my dad and my mom would react to some of the jokes that were in the Sunday comics. And I saw other people react to them. And, you know, you would go places and you'd notice that people would pin the comics up on the refrigerator or in restaurants, they'd have them up on the, you know, near the cash register, places like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it struck me that that was a way to bring joy to people's lives, uh, especially if you were doing humor kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, uh, struck me is that's actually an important job. It's not. It, it's not an unimportant thing to do. Uh, and comics uh, that really uh, drew me to that. It, it wasn't until a little while later that I realized that people wrote and drew them. It was actually, um, I think it was like a, a Good Morning America piece or a CBS Sunday Morning piece or something like that on uh, Garfield uh, being produced in Indiana. Uh, that uh, made me realize, oh, there's people behind this. You know, the people write and draw these things, and this is a job. Yeah, uh, and yeah. and then it became kind of my life's work to uh, to do that. Love that story. I love that um, story of the path and that idea of bringing people joy. So I, I mentioned that. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say. The, the, the other thing on the kind of more comic book side of it mm -hmm. is the idea of the hero's quest always fascinates me and and, uh, uh, and and having really good good guys and really bad bad guys uh, I love that stuff and certainly uh, superhero comics especially mm -hmm. really epitomize that kind of thing especially when you're like an eight year old uh, boy you know <laughs> <laughs> definitely so definitely so I can relate absolutely yes. Um, I, I was going to mention Underdog there again as being one of my mm -hmm. favorites, but any particular mile markers uh, for you that you've worked on as you look back? Um, so far, Underdog, and that was a bucket list project kind of right off the the, the top. Mm -hmm. um, I love Casper the Friendly Ghost, and I got to color a couple of stories and do some um, – uh the the licensors uh, want you to draw everything on model and sometimes it's the inker and the colorists that end up doing the patchwork mm -hmm. um and since i was able to do both american mythology trusted me to do all the the patches on the jobs that i was coloring and uh so i got to kind of draw casper uh, to bring him a little more on model for a few stories and that was a lot of fun uh, that was another milestone because Casper is someone everyone's heard of and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, I have to say, I never thought in a million, whoops, in a million years that I'd be working on the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got the call, uh, you know, American Mythology called and said that they uh, were in a deadline crunch. They had this five page story. Could I get it done in like a week? Um, and I said, yeah, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and and did a basic kind of on the animated versions of them uh, for that. But it was so much fun. And I, it, it brought back memories of watching the Three Stooges with uh, my grandparents and my grandfathers uh, and mm -hmm. things like that. So it, it was great. But that was another uh, big milestone. And um, earlier this year, I got to uh, do some preliminary licensing uh, artwork uh, uh, with the uh, the Hagar, the horrible people, oh, and um, none of it official. Just kind of uh, just to see they had some ideas, and I sketched some ideas out for them. Uh, but that was another milestone. Hagar uh, uh, is a strip I would love to work on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I think or work on it in any kind of capacity. Do a graphic novel. Do something. Um, I, I think that would be a, a lot of fun to uh, a lot of fun to do. And I'm uh, working on a pitch right now uh, and I'll, I can talk about that later on on what's next. Uh, but I'm working on a pitch right now that if it's successful would uh, put two characters who I dearly love uh, on on my radar and on my resume as well. Love it, love it. Um, so, other than those those characters that are in a project that we'll talk about in the in the what what's next portion, um, yeah. any other bucket list characters or worlds that you'd like to create in, or folks you'd like to work with? Um, I uh, there's lots of folks I uh, uh, like to work with. Um, uh, most of them are the comic strip guys, uh, mm -hmm. just because a lot of them are not getting uh, any younger. Uh, and I think it would be 
interesting for a cartoonist like me to be able to work with them to learn uh, uh, some of their secrets. Uh-huh. Um, I, I talk every once in a while to Greg Walker from Beetle Bailey. And, uh, he, you know, we talk art and we talk shop, which still blows my mind <laughs> that, 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 that I can do that. Um, but, you know, working, it'd be cool to work on this strip with him or work on a Beetle Bailey project or something just to, to learn, to, to be able to, uh, uh, to really uh, see uh, what they've learned and what they can pass on to other cartoonists like me. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially now where you don't necessarily have to be in the same room as the person because we've got Zoom and we've got, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that there'd be a lot of value uh, in that, and a lot of value in, in apprenticing kind of uh, uh, with stuff like that. Um, same thing with the uh, Hagar, the horrible, being able to work with the team that's producing that. Um, I I think that would be a, a lot of fun. I'd probably learn way more than um, uh, I'd probably have to pay them to work because <laughs> uh, it would be that kind of an experience. But uh, 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 Dick Tracy too is one of those bucket list projects uh, again that I think would be fun to work on. Uh, and even the current creative team, I think I'd learn a ton if I was uh, assisting them in some way. Yeah, yeah. That that Warren Beatty film just entered my life at just the right time. So yes, I'm always yes. down for a Dick Tracy story. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Dick Loker was uh, who drew the strip and uh, wrote it for a while, but primarily known for drawing it for thirty years. About. Um, he was a good friend of mine and uh, it, it was fun to watch him create Dick Tracy. Uh, it, 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 it's one of those things that blows my mind that um, I was friends with him. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and then I got to watch him, you know, create, you know, my favorite comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. That is very cool. Cool connection. Um, so uh, along with Dick Loker, which is, which is really nice. Any other collaborators along the way, people that have been especially kind? Um, uh, Dick Loker was uh, very generous. Uh, one of the people who's been so uh, mind-blowingly uh, generous to me is Bill Galvin um, from Archie Comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he penciled Underdog while I was inking and coloring it. And he actually got me my first gig at American Mythology. Um, when I saw they got the Underdog license, I knew that this was going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and that I needed to... Uh, if I was going to work on it, really try to do it. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. And the only person who I kind of knew to contact at American Mythology was Bill because he worked at Archie and I had been trying to get work at Archie. Um, and so I contacted Bill and said, hey, man, is there any way you can uh, get my name in front of an editor or things like that? And he said, well, give me a couple of days and I'll see what I can do. And I think it was later that day, even uh-huh. or maybe the next day, but it was it was really fast. He came back with, hey, I got you a coloring gig. It's only, you know, four pages or three pages. I forgot what the original one was. Uh, but it was a, uh, a rocking, or yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a uh, Sherman and Peabody story. Oh, nice, and nice. Uh, Bill, Bill had drawn it. Uh, Bob Smith inked it. Uh, so, you know, so two legends uh, in the industry. And uh, he got me the gig to color it. So that was my foot in the door. Uh, American Mythology really liked the work that I did for it, so I got put on the rotation. Uh, and then the inking gig opened up on Underdog, and Bill recommended me for that, and uh, nice. they said yes. And then when um, circumstances were that Bill couldn't draw the first issue of Underdog and Pals, uh, he recommended to the editor, he said, you know, Matt's perfectly capable of doing it, so why don't you let him do it? Um, especially because he'd been inking the book. Uh, and they did that. And uh, so I am forever grateful to him for uh, for that. And uh, I would love to collaborate with him again. Uh, we did a, a, a special just kind of a fan drawing, uh, me and uh, him and his son and our friend Adrian wrote, uh, wrote a script. And we did a little one page underdog thing about washing your hands and maintaining your distance during the kind of the height of the pandemic when we were supposed to be doing all that stuff. Um so that was fun to kind of get the band back together. Uh, but I'd really like to work with Bill again uh, on something. It, it was a lot of fun to work with him. Um, <clears throat> uh, I worked with Roger McKenzie at Charlton Comics, or not Charlton. It, it's what Charlton Comics calls itself now. Uh, um, 
I, I, the name is escaping me at the moment. I, I will do some uh, internet digging really quick. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it, it's Charlton something that, uh, arrow the charlton arrow that's ah, what okay. they call it um roger mckenzie and i uh roger of course has did daredevil right before frank miller took over the book and uh uh you know exploded it mm. uh, uh but uh roger's run is really cool and uh roger uh, also did a bunch of a ton of stuff at marvel and dc uh but he and i did some work together at charlton arrow and i'd love to work with him again um it was a lot of fun collaborating with him on stories. He's an excellent script writer. Um, he really thinks visually, uh, uh, which is not true of all comic book writers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, uh, I would really, I'd like working. Uh, we'd love to work with him again. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And I, I've just been thinking about underdog and how, um, I mean, you, you bring that lovely sort of, cartoonish sort of prototypical superhero story um which i feel like is what that character is all about and again i, I just really enjoy your range as well yep. uh from the Thank things you. you've worked on yeah um any future directions creative works that you'd like to mention you mentioned ornamental yeah. being one of those yeah ornamental uh coming out um i am working uh with a good friend of mine um uh jeff kirsten he uh, is best known in the comic book world and or comic strip world, actually, uh, for writing the historical essays that accompanied each of the uh, IDW Dick Tracy volumes when they reprinted the uh, the Chester Gould's run on the strip. Uh, so Jeff is a a real expert in Dick Tracy and the characters and who they're based on and the history of the strip and all that kind of stuff. Um, he and I are working on a political thriller. Uh, uh, concept called Township uh, and that uh, is going to come out either we're going to self-publish it or uh, either syndicate it or go through American Mythology or something but uh, we're it, it's going to come out next year in some way shape or form so watch this space um, <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, it's really cool it's it, it's about justice uh, it it's about uh, the kind of meeting of the corruption of government and corporations. Um, it starts off with a murder in a gravel pit. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, so it's a partial whodunit, but it's also a political mystery and political thriller uh, as it talks about corruption and how even at the local level that gets amplified up to the national level and vice versa. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, we're also working on a uh, 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 on a pitch to uh, do two Chicago Tribune properties. Um, I uh, they're two bucket list characters that I said I would mention before, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're working on uh, uh, on a idea with Brenda Starr, and uh, it would co-star Dick Tracy. Oh wow! Um, wow! Awesome! Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it would be the the first time narratively that the two characters have met they've actually met once in a one-off comic strip page that dick loker actually did uh when tracy was going through a divorce or was was going to have a divorce he never did of course divorce tests but uh the threat was that he was going to have to divorce tests or something like that mm -hmm. uh and brenda Starr interviewed him um but that that is not continuity uh, not in continuity because it didn't happen in either of their strips. So the characters have never really met. So this would be a, a, a case that brings them together. It's primarily a Brenda Starr story. Um, uh, and it's based on a real newspaper story that happened in the 1920s and involves Al Capone and uh, some newspaper like men and murder and blackmail and uh, again, political and corporate corruption, <laughs> popular oh, themes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then I'm uh, working on Marty and Spud and uh, another Marty and Spud story. And Marty and Spud, my uh, strip, the premise is that Marty has a very active imagination. And so he imagine and imagines himself on these adventures sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I really ripped the concept off. A lot of people think it comes from Calvin and Hobbes, which it does a little bit. But where I really ripped the concept off from is an old comic strip. Uh, maybe you've heard of it called Dickie Dare. Um, uh -huh. Uh, which Milton Kniff did. 
And uh, in Dickie Dare, Dickie Dare would be reading Robinson Crusoe or the Swiss family of uh, 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 Robinson or whatever. And uh, he would wake up in the story, him and his dog. And I thought that, well, that that's a cool concept, right? To kind of imagine yourself in the story uh, taking place. And obviously I can't do the official versions of anything, but I do uh, very close parodies of them all. Uh, so Marty imagines himself being kind of this Indiana Jones Han Solo character sometimes, <laughs> or one time he was the Mandalorian, uh, you know, another time he was a Star Trek characters kind of, uh, but the mini series I'm working on next year um, is a uh, parody of Flash Gordon. Uh, nice, so nice. it'll involve uh, characters with wings. We're going to go to all the Flash Gordon worlds and all of that kind of stuff. So look for that next year. Cool things, cool things on the way. Um, yeah. Where can people go to check out Marty and Spud and some of the other things that you're working um, on? The best place to check out Marty and Spud right now uh, is it Marty? Is it the uh, Facebook page? So just facebook.com slash Marty and Spud. Um, there'll be news being posted about the miniseries coming out uh, once I get a few things tidied up with Gorilla about that first. Um, but uh, that's where the latest news uh, for the strip is at and where the latest projects are at. Um, about Mar you know, with Marty and Spud in them and things like that. That also links to my regular. Uh, Facebook page so feel free to friend me um, and I post all the time about projects coming out and things like that so uh, that's the easiest places to uh, uh, find me and, and stalk me <laughs> <laughs> well awesome awesome glad to share about your work glad to hear that there is more to come and lots of creative directions and, and looking forward to some Barbara Starr meets Dick Tracy. That'll be uh, yes. really good, really good. Shout out to June Brigman out there. As yes. Well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She well, did wonderful well, work. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, did we miss anything in the talk through that you want to make sure to share before we close out the episode? Uh, no, I I think we've we uh, we've covered everything. I that I wanted to cover and uh, all the things I wanted to hit. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, sounds great. And glad to have you back on as uh, projects come to be. And thanks sure. again for spending some time with us, Matt. Sure. Thanks for having me. It was a, a real pleasure to be on, on your program. And I, I really enjoy your, 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 your program. It's great to, to watch all the creators and the, the variety of creators that you get to see. So it, it's great to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, and glad to have an episode featuring you. Thank you. Thank you very much.